The Apartment Gurus podcast is brought to you by Greenlight Equity Group, an apartment acquisitions and holdings firm co-founded by Carl York and Tate Seamer, host of this show. We offer you the opportunity to be an owner of cash-flowing, wealth-growing apartments without the headaches of being a landlord. These assets are recession-resistant, risk-mitigated, offer significant tax advantages, and are a great alternative to the stock market. Ready to check it out? Go to www.investwithgreenlight.com today to book a personal consultation with Carl or Tate. Again, that's investwithgreenlight.com. We look forward to meeting you. Welcome to The Apartment Gurus, where twice a week, host Tate Seymour brings you deep dive interviews with the wisest gurus in the apartment investing industry. These experts are sure to create game-changing value and inspiration designed to catapult your business to the next level. Be sure to reach out to Tate at www.investwithgreenlight.com for access to his investor portal and Calendly link. And now, here is Tate Seymour and the Apartment Gurus. Welcome, everybody, back. Another episode of The Apartment Gurus is coming at you today. And today we have a, a, a great story of somebody that spent 20 years in the corporate W-2 world, uh, did very well there, but has since created a whole new life for himself and a whole new business uh, in the multifamily uh, acquisitions and ownership space, uh, apartments specifically. And uh, I'm really excited uh, because I know so many listeners are in the same shoes that Philippe Shuligan was in being being employed, right? Like that's just a reality. You know, so many of us have jobs, J-O-B's, uh, J-O-B's, right? J-O-B-S, <laughs> I can spell. So, you know, like it's it, it's a valuable perspective to uh, to have somebody like Philippe on. And just so you guys know, Philippe, I'm going to pump you up here a little bit. 2,400 plus units, $140 million assets under management, his portfolio worth uh, value, and has raised $29 million from investors. That's a terrific, uh, terrific story. And I'm looking forward to hearing all about how you did it, Philippe. Uh, so I'm super excited to have you on the show. Uh, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Tate. Yeah. Excited to be here. Yeah, you bet. I'm excited to have you. So listeners, tune in real closely here. Get rid of any distractions that you might have going on. This is going to be worth listening to, I promise, and maybe even taking some notes. Uh, Philippe, if you would um, just kind of for for you know context sake, share with us a little bit about your background and uh, where that really cool accent is from and <laughs> anything, anything, uh, else that, uh, you know, it, especially in your real estate career, kind of help, help us get to where we are today and with what you're doing today. Of course. Uh, gladly. Yeah. So, um, some, some of you may have, uh, heard a slight accent like Tate mentioned. <laughs> and, uh, I was born in, in France and from France and, I actually came in to the US uh in my late twenties, uh where it's 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 much tougher to lose an accent. But, <laughs> um I, you know, I came uh uh after graduating uh engineering school, I started my career in a uh, military and uh, uh private jets mm. aircraft manufacturing industry. Mm. And I spent 20 years, you know, working for the same company. And mm -hmm. uh, relatively early during my career, they sent me over initially for six months to the U.S. Mm. Um, and it's a uh, France-based company. And they sent me to to this uh, a subsidiary in the in the U.S. And uh, yeah, for six months. And one thing led to another. I had an opportunity to stay a little longer, then to to go to another place in the US. So I did Arkansas and then New Jersey and, you know, eventually made my life here in the US and uh, met my wife, got divorced, uh, <laughs> eventually remarried. Now, you know, my, my wife and I, we have two young daughters. We live here in Atlanta, Georgia. Nice. But my, my transition from 
W2, the W2 World 2 uh, real estate really came as I was always, I wasn't necessarily big on, you know, hobbies and etc. You know, I always like to spend during my W2, spend time to try to make something useful, mm -hmm. such as trying to invest in different areas. And after different attempts in the stock market, which at that time was a little more, uh, and I guess it's still hard to invest well yeah. in, in, in the stock market, but I came, you know, I'm like, yeah, I have to do something different to uh, be successful in investing. And I came across real estate. About what year was this? It was uh, 2015, 16. Yeah. So not all that terribly long ago, six, seven that, years ago. That's yeah. right. And, uh, but, you know, I had to, a lot to learn. And, and, you know, I think my, my, barrier to to enter that world was you know the lack of knowledge the the lack of network and so on and you know i stumbled upon uh bigger pockets which you know i oh, think yeah. for for somebody who is beginning uh, uh it's great resources yeah especially for single family the the this website good community a lot of good content and podcasts etc and that's how i you know i started to learn and and you know initially because you know i was really focused on my w2 job you know trying to to have my career and um you know i had i was in middle management at the time spending a lot of time at work and I'm like, you know, I'm not going to have time to to spend on this real estate thing. You know, I just want to invest, but invest passively. So mm. I became aware of turnkey single family. And I'm like, yeah, it's a good start. You know, why not? You know, a, let, let's let's do that. So what, what, started, I'm sorry. What, what, can you can you repeat that again? What what did you become turn, aware of? Turnkey oh, single family. Got it. Yeah. Perfect. Right. Yep. So I purchased a couple of houses, like one every year and at that time. And then, you know, very quickly, I realized a couple of things that even though they were turnkey, so we, you know, didn't have to do the renovations and so on myself, mm -hmm. it wasn't as passive as I thought. You know, initially right. everything goes well, then, the, you know, the, you have a tenant, they don't start, you know, they start right. not paying their, their rent for right. a bit or, you know, you have... You know, they're leaving the unit in in bad shape. So now you have like heavy renovations start, you know, the, the roof start leaking and, you know, it, mm -hmm. it wasn't as passive as expected. Yeah. And, you know, from a scaling standpoint, it was really hard to, to scale really. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, oh, it's going to take like decades for me to reach my 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 goals of financial independence. Then I... I did more research and I, I came across uh, a multifamily mm -hmm. and I'm like, okay, so how I'm going to do that now? And, you know, what does it take? And, you know, I, th I think at the, at the same time, I realized maybe passive, maybe I could be active, you know, maybe it was, uh, you know, I could spend the time a little more time, you know, dedicate and, and balance better my life professional life and spend a little more on, on myself to put some energy uh, on multifamily. So I took, I took a course again, you know, going through bigger pockets, looking for people who took uh, different courses right. and um, yeah, I took a course and, you know, it was back in early 2017 and relatively quickly to my great surprise, I, I came across a deal that I had under LOI like three months after starting the course. Which course was this, Philippe? It was uh, with Michael Blanc. Yeah, and and listeners, we, you know, we're, we're not officially affiliated with Mr. Blanc, as I like to think of him, but his conferences and his coaching programs, and especially Deal Maker Live, his live event uh, that is in the summer uh this year it was in june so so worth considering attending because they're just game changing i know i mentioned this before on other episodes but i think it's so important to hammer home these national conferences can be absolutely life-changing and michael puts on a great great event usually there's you know four to six hundred people there that are all very high level apartment investors it's it's very specific to larger scale multifamily investing so uh and i know his coaching program is too i have i met my uh current one of my current partners at dealmaker live in in 2019 or 
uh, yeah, 2019. So three years ago, and she had gone through the coaching course with Michael and came out of that course, really, really like pro level, not level of knowledge, level of like resources. She had already really started to bust into a market for us, um, in Oklahoma city. Uh, so we hit the ground running with her and, you know, those are the kinds of things that can happen at a conference. You meet partners, you, you find money, you find deals and you grow your business. So Philippe, was that course, the Michael Blanc course was, uh, you know, how instrumental was that for you in, uh, in getting you going? I think it was probably the most significant, at least at the beginning, the most significant piece because, you know, I, I think I learned a lot of the language and the big picture of things through, you know, listening to free content, podcasts, etc. However, you know, having a course that lays out like all the steps, it put things in a different perspective and it was really instrumental just to follow step by steps. Really. Yeah. And yeah. and then, you know, I think the, the next step after that was really, you know, once I found my deal and I partnered uh, with more experienced people, you know, they assigned me a mentor who was going to work with me, mm -hmm. uh, you know, throughout the deal. So, you know, it was like hands-on right. learning experience. So I was right. really like doing all the tasks, but like, you know, uh, discussing with the mentor because so you, know, you can learn so much, you know, like the... In, in a in a course or in a book but you know when do, doing it you know you have, you have always you know a lot of, of additional questions and i think we, without the help of experienced people around you it becomes very very difficult you know it's like you can learn how to fly an airplane by reading books and probably have like good understanding however it's going to take a really like practical exercise and flying like hands-on to know and, and learn how it, it's working. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Having that mentor, uh, looking over your shoulder, making sure you're checking all the boxes, uh, making sure you're not making any critical errors, you know, signing off on the deal, signing off on the business plan, helping with capital raising, all of those things. Those are, those are massive, massive items and they're what it takes to get a deal done, obviously. And especially if it's your first deal, having that coach or mentor in, in your corner is invaluable. And and there's other great coaching programs out there. Jake and Gino have, have an awesome program. In my opinion, uh, I have a one-on-one -on -one coaching program where I work really hands-on deep dive into this exact thing, going and getting deals done. And that's what I love about, you know, a paid coaching mentor situation is you, that dedication that you get from that person in your corner you know they're there for every punch you take every every punch you make they're there between rounds like you know the whole boxing analogy it, it, it's because getting that first deal done is is hard you know you're you're dealing with a lack of a track record at least personally now you could bring in a partner obviously and that's the fastest way to get a track record is to bring in a partner and again those are just that right there that's the kind of thing that you need a coach in your ear or mentor in your ear that's telling you what you need to do. That's so key. I'm, I'm so glad you did that. And I bet you, I mean, you've just had tremendous results. Your current portfolio is over 2000 units and your, your assets under management is huge. I mean, I'm guessing that that foundation was absolutely critical in creating that success. I bet Michael's really proud of you. Does he, does he ever put you up on stage and and uh celebrate your success yeah I, actually he's giving these uh coins i have like bo both coins you know i have like the first deal and the financial independence coin yeah i happen to have joined hey, hold uh, yours up again here's this is my law of the first deal coin i guess i guess people will yeah that's, <laughs> it, that's it i love that's it, it. i know, love it you'll have to watch on on youtube yeah, on YouTube, coins. you got to see the coins. <laughs> so I'll take a picture of the screen and uh, and put it out on social media. Yeah, that's and, great. And so that that's one thing, and the other thing, and you know, I was I was fortunate enough to now give back to the community, and I joined Michael's program as a mentor. 
Yeah. So, you know, each year at Dealmaker Live, there's a little segment and all the mentors who are talking about, you know, what works best for uh, our students, you know, what we observe, what are the techniques, the markets, etc., that that are the, the best for our students. And we share that with uh, the attendees. Yeah, it's so it's so good. You, like you said, you're giving back to the community. Real quick, I just want to rewind for a second. It seems like Bigger Pockets was your very, very beginning initial foray into real estate, which is such a good place to start. Like listeners, if if you're not in tune with Bigger Pockets, it is not multifamily specific. However, there is a lot of multifamily content in the blogs and videos, specifically smaller multifamily they they focus on it sounds like there was a moment that you you said you came across multifamily How, was that through bigger pockets uh, was that through like following yeah. people and reading articles or how did you come across multifamily yeah so just one thing on bigger pockets i think what the main attraction for me from that community was the community aspect and and the ability yeah. to go on the forums and talk to other people like me who are beginning at the time and and have conversations actually that's that's how i met one of my investors as well mm -hmm. and just share you know like the beginning experience and and asking you know like talking to real people uh who are doing things and 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 researching and comparing notes etc that was that was very interesting to me because you know i guess i always have you know when when you see like a very polished marketing about some you know somebody trying to sell you a program um you know i, I i'm more relying on on the testimonials part right than the actual marketing itself yeah so that was that was one thing, and uh, yeah, you know, I just started to listen to podcasts, and I think probably I started with bigger pockets as mm -hmm. I, I listened that a lot, and and you know, just to hear, listen to very success, successful people there, and usually uh, people who have like thousands of of units under management, you know, it's through multifamily, right, right. Yep. So so that's yep. how I, I I I heard about multifamily, which you know. Of course, initially, you like it's one thing, you know. I think like w when you're not in the business, you can imagine buying a home, you know, and and, right. and you know a, a lot of people they they buy their their own home, so you know they have a good idea of how it works, and and you know to replicate that to buy a rental property is going to be very similar. But then you know how do you uh, picture of like buying uh, an apartment building, you know, yeah. and, and like 50, a hundred units. Right. It's, it's like unbelievable. Yeah. But, I, let know, me stop. Wait, can I, ahead. can I stop you right there? Hold that thought. Cause I want to hear what else you had to say, but that point you just made is so key to this. Like it's 90, in my opinion, this mindset thing, what you believe when you said you said it's unbelievable to think you could do 50 to a hundred units. Exactly. That's it. I mean, it, whether you believe you can or believe you can't, you're right. And this is, this game is so, so much about shifting your mindset to believing that you can achieve what you want to achieve. And believe me, you want to be the owner of 150 unit apartment built. You want to be the owner of 10, 150 unit apartment buildings, because the life that that will afford you when you set things up right with your asset management and your team in place, your third party property management, you know, the way you leverage other people and other, other people's time, efforts, resources, money, et cetera. Uh, that life that you're going to create for yourself is that's what we're everybody listening, everybody, you know, myself, Philippe, that's what we're all after here. And uh, I just want to make that, I, I hammer that home because for me, I, I remember the very moment and I, I won't get into it, but I remember the very moment that I got my head around like, okay, maybe I could do a hundred units, you know, like the, and, and that's like, that's a key watershed moment in, in your career uh, and, and in your business, like, and that's what you're creating right now. Uh, if you haven't already, you're creating the belief that you can do it. And guess what? Signing up for a Michael Blanc course and learning, like F Philippe said earlier, the language, the vocabulary that you need, the conceptual knowledge you need 
to, to start doing this business is one of the best ways to attain that confidence because you're getting the tools in your belt that you need to go out and fight the battle. I guess that wasn't maybe weapons in your belt <laughs> is a better analogy, but Philippe, excellent point. And uh, yeah, that, keep keep going with what you were going on because this is great. Yeah, I mean, you know, to touch, I think mindset is certainly important and the, you know, and I think it's, Probably the mindset of you know where do you spend your energy, mm -hmm. and, and and you know don't 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 spend on the energy too too much like on the problems and why it's not going to work and and more the energy on how to make it work. Yeah, and really when it comes to a large multifamily property, you know you you have to break it down to you know, the whole process, you know, there's a process to identify the deal, underwrite, do the due diligence, closing, you know, getting your investors to put equity in the deal along you. And, you know, of course, like just said like that, could, it, it looks overwhelming. And then there are like yeah. certainly thick books that are, have been written and courses that That's we mentioned right. yep. that, that talk about that. But, you know, when you break it down in smaller pieces, uh, uh, you know, it, it makes a lot of sense. It's not that difficult. Like the, the individual uh, uh, steps are not that difficult. The yeah. other aspect of, of that, and I think, you know, yourself, Tate, you know, you, you're working with partners in your company and so so do I, right? And, and I think a lot of this success of, you know, taking down, you know, the, the 100, 150, 200 uh, uh, units uh, plus uh, uh, properties, it's about, partnership and that's you know a lot of my deals uh and i think it's not a lot of all of my deals i've been working with partners there are always partners on on the the general partner side you know and people coming with different roles from you know finding the deal that's what i have i've done initially uh, on my first few deals and then you know in some other deals i was a mentor and some other deals i was more focused on on capital raising and or asset management so you know i did you know you can you can there are so many roles that you can fulfill and that can help you you know step by step you know grow your portfolio yeah another thing did you do an lp investment you, i know you did those in single family did you ever do an lp investment in in multifamily yes mm -hmm. i did for because you know when i eventually uh switched to full time into multifamily and i, I was able to quit my job now I had access to 401k money okay um you know when, that i could control so i did a solo 401k linked to my uh, llc actually and, but now I have control, you know, it's a, I have control about my, uh, for my retirement money. Yeah. Right. So, and I decided to, to invest and, you know, this is the money that you cannot invest in your own deal, right? The retirement money, like a self-directed IRA. Right. Right. And, and solo for one case. So I invested this money in deals. I was not a GP of. Did you do that before you, before you invested as a GP? No. Okay. No, I, it was okay. after. Yeah, okay. I, you know, uh, my my first and actually, you know, to be to be more more specific, you know, I think any any deal where you're you're GP, you're you, you're going to have to invest as an yep. LP as well, because yep. there are lender requirements. Yeah, uh, between five and ten percent of the down payment that the GPs have to contribute to the deal, right. and usually, you know, you do pro rata of uh, the uh, the different uh, interests. Uh, from the general partners in in the deal, so you know I think systematically on every deal I've I've been involved, I've been a little bit of of uh, an LP as well, and and mm -hmm. again depending on my involvement in the deal, you know the the amount was yeah. was uh, larger or smaller. Right. And just to point out, I think another takeaway here, you didn't do this specifically, but you kind of did. Yeah, investing as a passive investor and a multifamily syndication is a wonderful way to get started in this space. And especially if you can invest with a syndicator that you know well, or uh, that you trust that, you know, maybe you've recently met, but you vet them, you uh, check out their portfolio, you check out their references, et cetera. 
and you get a generally good vibe from them and they're willing to include you in meetings and like GP meetings, right? Like operational GP meetings uh, and email chains and things like that to keep you really closely in the loop uh, about what's going on in that deal. That is a tremendous way to start off in whether you're going to be a, a, you know, an operational partner, a GP, or you're going to uh, stay passive as a passive investor. Uh, that is a wonderful way to start off. And a lot of syndicators, uh, their, you know, their minimum investment is as low as $50,000. And, and, uh, you know, some syndicators will even go lower than that just to kind of get you on board and get your feet wet. So, you know, it's not a tremendous amount. Of, obviously it's not, it's not chump change, but it's not a tremendous amount of money to start to really learn the business. It's, it's a really good way of doing it. And it, it gives you some track record too. Like it's, a, it's actually something that's going to show, you know, show on your balance sheet and, and um, give you some track record. So super smart. For, take us from the, uh, what was your first, the, you, you got a deal under contract in three months uh, working the Michael Blanc program, uh, working with it. Uh, take us through that. What what was that first deal, um, and you know how did that go for you? Yeah, so I found I found the deal on on Loopnet, mm. interestingly enough, you know, and and sometimes yeah. it's called the uh, um, you know where the the deals go to die, but right. you know it, it's true. It's probably true for some markets. It's not true for all markets. And um, yeah, just found a, a deal sitting there and started to use the process, do the, the underwriting and, and et cetera, and uh, found that the deal was working. So, you know, I brought the deal um, actually to uh, Michael because at a very early stage of of uh, him running uh, his uh, company, Nighthawk, he was, uh, you know, considering... Uh, deals brought by by students so i was i right. was very fortunate then you know it was like timing was perfect because you know he's like where, where do you find you know I, I, in three months i wouldn't have had the time to start building relationship find partners and you know build a, a, a network so for me it was like a really the ability you know it was like a, a solution out there you bring the deal, there's a deal desk, you present the deal, you know, passes the criteria, and then, you know, you're, you're uh, uh, on board and you're going to to start uh, uh, working on the, on the deal. Mm -hmm. So uh, we worked on a, an agreement, you know, my goal was, as I mentioned earlier, like the hands-on uh, uh, work on, on the day-to-day -day things at every step with yeah. a, a, a mentor. Yeah. And, uh, um, you know the the other partners. The responsibility was to to bring, uh, particularly the investors' money. You know, it was it would be part of of their network. You know, mm -hmm. I had the option to to bring investors' money, but I didn't have the obligation. That's awesome. It was their responsibility. So yeah, you know, we discussed the different areas of, of responsibilities like that, and I believe any money at risk, we we probably shared uh, the those risks to together, and. Um, yeah, you know, the deal, um, you know, looked good. It, it was uh, 80 units in uh, Memphis, Tennessee. And, um, uh, you know, it underwrote well. And then, you know, we, we worked the, the, the deal. We did an inspection, uh, spoke to the property manager. And, uh, you know, it, it, worked, it worked pretty well. Um, you know, we closed on the deal and... Uh, you know the, the 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 deal performed pretty well to some uh, up to some point you know eventually we decided to change of property manager for various reasons and um you know then the, the deal started to work not as well and uh, uh uh you know we we kind of we said well you know maybe we should we should sell the deal and uh, ended up trying to sell the deal during during covid which was it yeah. was a, a little bit of a of a tough period uh obviously and though the, the deal had been paired with another deal so we are looking mm. at the portfolio level and you know what what was the best move there and you know actually for a good period of time my deal was performing well 
and he was kind of counterbalancing the other deal that that was underperforming oh, and then he yeah. kind of shifted around a little bit and that's when we said okay well you know, let, let's sell the deal and and we'll, we'll continue to focus on the on on the other asset and you know believe me there were a lot of lessons learned there yeah um, yeah and actually you know the first deal led me to my second deal because you know i was looking at other deals my second deal we got it under contract uh i think at the end of 2017 we closed in 2018 was 168 units in memphis nice and same type of play value add doing some renovations increasing rents and you know that that second deal actually you know again like lesson learned so we started to be a little more you know a little bit better it was a new market for everybody initially uh um, mm -hmm. The, the the Memphis market, but then you know it was at uh, that time was probably like the fourth deal with with the partners in the market, and um, you know now this one w worked really well. We plan to uh, uh, double the investors' money in uh, in five years, and we ended up I think quadrupling the the initial investment in four years. Mm. And we're very, you know, very fortunate on, on this one. You know, I think the, the first one, maybe we, we, we kind of lacked luck a little bit on the overall performance. And the, the, this uh, second one, he was, he was beyond our, our wildest expectations. Beautiful. Uh, let's, uh, on that first one, what, what was the big, what was like the biggest lesson for you in turn? You, you said lesson learned. What was like the big takeaway for you on that one? Oh, se several, I think, you know, well, I think the number one, and, and I believe, you know, you, you mentioned that often on your show, you know, the property manager is the key. So key. when you enter a, a new market, you want to pick the best property manager, you know, they ha who have experience with the same type of deals, same type of vintage Etc. And I believe, you know, maybe it was a little bit of our, our concern with the, the, the initial PM kind of worked out well, but the next one, they were more used to larger deals, really. Mm -hmm. so, so that's where like the uh, expenses starting to, to uh, go uh, much, much higher than expected. And, um, uh, but so, so that's one, you know, pick, pick, you know, build the relationship, develop the relationship with the PM and that will take, that will take time. It will take probably like a few deals to, to, uh, uh, really materialize that, you know, you can always, always, you know, use your network to, you know, discuss the experience of other op uh, operators with different PMs right. and that, you know, I think that's a uh, referrals, uh, like that are, are the best way to find the, the, yes. the right PM. Absolutely. Absolutely. The, the, the next big takeaway, you know, it was a, a, a property from the late sixties mm, yeah. and, you know, these older, older buildings, they require a lot of maintenance, you know, a lot of CapEx. And I think, whereas we had some CapEx, you know, he went like much beyond our expectations really. Yeah. And, uh, so, you know, I think at, after that, we started to boost our, our capital expense for older buildings quite a bit. And, uh, you know, and they, they, you know, there are, there are so many things that you, you, you have to consider, you know, we could do a, speak a whole hour on, on those, you know, things to, you, you, to look at on older buildings, but, you know, and, and something as simple as, you know, something you can see and you don't even necessarily think about it. It's like when you have trees that are branching above roofs, yeah. you're like, okay, well, you know, you clean the roof and, uh, you know, there are no issues really. But, you know, lenders, they, they will send their inspector over there and say, oh, you need to to uh, trim the tree up there, you know. Right. And then you get a quote from uh, landscaping groups and, and, you know, it comes like, it, it can cost a, a lot of money. Five figures. So I, I always yeah. like talk to my students, like, you know, just watch older buildings, watch the trees. You know, this is like a, such, such an easy thing to look at. You know, it's one thing to, you know, you work the deal and, you know, you do your, your inspection and you're going to discover things that you couldn't see, right. uh, uh, you know, uh, before uh, uh, signing a, um, an agreement, you know, a purchase and sell agreement with the seller. But, you know, this is like very easy thing to, to think about, you know, mm -hmm. before, you know, as for, for your CapEx. And, and regularly I've seen on many, many deals, 
you know, it's, it's coming back from, from the, the lender or they're like, you, you need to trim these trees, you know, uh, they, yeah. Don't forget that when you underwrite. I like that. Yeah. And, and that, that can, like you said, can be a pricey item. Uh, and chances are when you get up there, you're probably going to discover that you need a new roof as well on a, on a building that, that age, depending on when it was last re- replaced. But yeah, that's, that's a great takeaway. Like, uh, you know, in your buying criteria, define what vintage buildings you want to work with. Uh, and that will determine which deals you underwrite and which deals you, you, you won't. And there's a lot of reasons to stay away from, I don't know what, what's your cutoff, Philippe. Our, our, ours is, uh, kind of in the, you know, 1970s vintage. We'll look at stuff in the seventies. Do you have, do you have a specific criteria there? Well, you know, I, I'm trying to stay open-minded because, you know, I think, um, the uh it's all about like in, any deal can work you know if it's if it's properly underwritten so when you take into consideration all these these parameters uh though we kind of shifted i did a lot of class c uh buildings older buildings and we're kind of moving you know i think at some point like the the investors they are more attracted also to better products a little bit more, more uh, uh, newer and 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 uh, more attractive. So r- recently, we, we've we've shifted uh, shifted a little more to uh, newer or newer constructions. I would say nineties or let's say eighties and 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 newer. Okay. Yep. Yeah, and and a lot of syndicators won't look at anything older than than eighties. Like I, that you hear that a lot and. Again, a lot of good reasons for that. There's, you know, there's mechanic, the mechanicals, the 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 plumbing, the uh, electric, all of those key roofing windows, etc. Those key items that will d- determine your capex budget and what you need to spend. Uh, and like you said, if if you properly underwrite it, it can work, but you can't overlook anything. And there's there's a lot of nuances to to older buildings, so. Um, right on. So let's talk about what you're doing today, Philippe. You, you guys, you guys have a portfolio over 2000 units. Is that mostly in, uh, in the Tennessee markets? No, actually it's, um, yeah. And, and by the way, we, we, we reached recently about 3000 units. We just wow, added nice. a, a, Very a, nice. a portfolio of, uh, 700 units, um, very nice. Our, uh, uh, yeah, and and so basically, so the states there will be Georgia to Tennessee, Alabama, Texas, and Arizona. I think that's yeah. that's where we are right now. Either we're going to to do a, a deal ourselves, you know, where we we are lead GPs in in the market we we are familiar with, and 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 uh, we have a lot of experience, or we are going to partner with more experienced sponsors you know in in their given markets mm-hmm. it's kind of right. our model and uh, what we, we're working on right now you know we've recently launched a fund mm-hmm. which is a cpref fund as my, my partner came up with this this name so it's mm-hmm. a customizable private real estate fund and mm-hmm. you know i think the the we, we kind of listen to to our investors and like I, I i mentioned you know it was very important for us to uh, be able to offer a variety of different deals different risk returns profiles different uh, business plans different markets markets and as a single operator you know you're going to be an expert in one or two markets you know you cannot be an expert right. in 10 so right. that's why we we believe very much into partnering with very experienced partners in 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 other markets and through our fund i think the idea you know the fund gives us the flexibility to to join deals you know either in a joint venture or as a general partner, as a co-general partner, either also as a limited partner. So we have we have a, a very wide flexibility to join deals in different capacity. And in turn, you know, our, our investors within the the the, uh, the fund, the customizable part is that they can select the deals they want to invest in. Mm, wow. 
it's, it's kind of a, a win-win for for everybody. So we have like you know the, the fund being a it's a super syndication, if you will, right? So we'll have a, like a, a portal, you know, one-stop shop portal to access the different deals. One private placement memorandum because it's with the fund. And then, you know, one, one tax return with, with the fund, you know, mm. we, we, we offer the diversification, multiple deals, multiple markets, multiple business plans, and then, you know, um, investors, they can pick and choose, you know, what fit yeah. best their, their needs, you know, is it cash on cash or is it the overall returns? What's more important for them? So we, we, we offer that selection of, of, of deals and, uh, yeah, that's we're very excited about this uh, fund. It's a boost wealth fund, and uh, our goal is to raise fifteen million dollars for this fund. Okay, that's awesome. That's so, so exciting. And is the best way to learn about it at boostmycapital.com? Right. Yeah, yeah. You can people can reach out to us to to our website boostmycapital.com, or they can email me at, at Philippe P H I L I P P E at boostmycapital.com. Okay. Yeah. That, that sounds like an amazing vehicle. Did you guys kind of invent that or is that something that's, I mean, are there, is a customizable fund something that existed before this, I guess is, I, is what I'm asking. I think the, no, the, the concept is not uh, necessarily, I mean, we don't own any, uh, any, uh, uh, rights on, 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 on yeah. inventing it, but it, it was out there, you know, and I think, you know, we're working with, uh, with, with a provider, we helps us, you know, automatize all the back office around that, but I've heard other people who are doing this type of fund on their own, you know, mm-hmm. after it's just a matter of, of, you know, I think the, the accounting behind the scenes, it can become a little bit, a, a little bit tricky. Because now you need to to redirect the different uh, 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 amounts of money invested to you know the different deals and 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 split the the returns etc. And also from a tax standpoint. So yeah, yeah, it's it's uh, you know I think it's very exciting for us to to have started that and and I think it's the it's uh, uh, it gives the most flexibility for to achieve diversification uh, yeah. for investors. Yeah. And it's totally passive. Like, you know, again, back to this passive investment opportunity here, you have the ability to be in multiple projects with, uh, you know, whatever amount of capital you're coming to the table with. Do you guys have a minimum investment? Yeah. It's uh, $50,000. 50. So, yeah. and can somebody split that between different assets? Is that possible? Uh, yes. Or, yeah. Yes. But, uh, you know, not to some extent, but yeah, yes, okay. it's, it's, that's, that's the idea. Yes. Very exciting. That's very cool. I love it. This has been so cool, Philippe. Unfortunately, we're kind of up against time here. I, I'd like to just kind of put you on the spot here and say, you know, if you could go back to that guy that was working the W-2 job and was looking at bigger pockets and learning about real estate, how would you coach him? How would you advise him? You know, I, I would even go before that time frame, and, yeah. and and really, my, you know, people should take a close look at at real estate and and learn about it. You know, it's a learning process, like like you know, anything else. But as as soon as you can, you know, I, I think it's the best vehicle where you can invest money in. You know, passively, and if you have the opportunity, you can be active as well. There are so many facets of this business, and you know, it's just the best world. You know, for investing and for being an entrepreneur. You know, yeah. the community is really great as well. But you know, start as soon as you can. You know, don't don't waste time. You know, I know it's tempting crypto. You know, and you might be lucky. Stock market. Yeah. You know, uh, same same thing. You know, the my you know, I, I think it's it's much uh, uh, easier to to achieve success with real estate. Yeah, it's it, the volatility uh, factor just doesn't even compare when you look at stocks and uh, crypto, like specifically. Um, you know, multifamily is you're investing in a business that's providing a universal need uh, to the general public, and 
you have, a, you know, ideally you have a great operational business plan that is making that business very profitable uh, to the point that it's going to give you great returns on your investment. That's the name of the game. And, and uh, you, that's, you can do that in any market. You can do it in a, in a thriving up market. You can do it in a, in a flat market and you can do it in a down market, like, and rents don't go down typically at all uh, ever, <laughs> but you know, in downturns specifically in, re in recessions, you don't see, uh, rents drop much if at all, uh, you might see a flattening of growth, but, um, that's to be expected. So, okay. So w uh, any, any final like words of advice to investors that maybe are in the single family space, looking to scale up and trying to get their first multifamily deal done. I will say what I, 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 I always say, you know, when, when, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm interviewed, uh, uh, and you know, Michael Blanc has us at uh, dealmaker live, all, all the mentors at the end. And I think, you know, two things to, to consider is focus and persistence. Mm. Right. You know, you need, yeah. you need to focus on, you know, select a market, select some criteria, discuss with your mentor and, uh, uh, focus, you know, don't, don't have the shiny object syndrome and also, you know, you know, don't be persistent. You know, you will have to probably underwrite at least a hundred deals to be able to close on one. Yeah. So don't, don't be discouraged, you know, walk in the, it's a, it's a marathon, you know, it's not, it's not a sprint. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, Philippe Shuligan, boostmycapital.com. Is there any other way of uh, listeners reaching you, Philippe? Yeah. My email, uh, Philippe at boostmycapital.com. It spells P-H-I-L-I-P-P-E. -I -I -P -P -E. And also your listeners can find a, a, a free uh, downloadable PDF on our website, the five ways to boost your, your capital with your retirement funds mm, on our nice. website. Nice. There you go. All right, listeners. First of all, Philippe, this has been amazing. Thank you so much for kind of opening up your playbook and sharing uh really high level uh, experience with us. Tons of great takeaways. Uh, so I really appreciate you being on the show, man, and, and wish you all the luck. Let us know if there's ever anything we can do for you. Sounds good. Thank you so much, Tate. Appreciate it. And good. listeners, thank you for listening to another episode of the Apartment Gurus podcast. Coming at you two times a week to the point that I'm losing my voice right now, as you can probably hear. But uh, nonetheless, uh, we're really excited to be bringing you people like Philippe, uh, and our other guests that are, that are creating so much value, uh, hopefully for you guys. And as you move your businesses forward, so keep doing this stuff, keep listening to these types of resources, uh, leave a rating and review if you would like, I love that and, uh, and keep coming back. So, uh, we'll see you in a few days on the next episode of the apartment gurus podcast. Take care, everybody. This has been The Apartment Gurus with Tate Seymour. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe and leave a rating and review on your favorite podcast platform. To contact Tate, go to www.investwithgreenlight.com for access to his investor portal and Calendly link. He loves to hear from you and thanks you for being a valued listener. Just a reminder that you are the guru. See you on the next episode of The Apartment Gurus.